So in this video, you're gonna see a lot of potatoes. And if that's not what you're interested in, I don't know what to tell you. Hi, I'm Andrew. Recently on this channel, I made a video where I recreated these exceptionally good fries from one of my favorite restaurants. To make those fries, I had to find a particular type of potato called the Kennebec potato. And I could only find it through a produce wholesaler, which meant the minimum quantity I could buy it in was a 50 pound box. So I've had all these potatoes that I've had to find something to do with. I've given some away to friends. I've used some in normal cooking. I was left with about half the box, 25 pounds. So I thought, okay, this is actually a great opportunity to try a bunch of potato recipes that I had always wanted to try, but never got around to doing. So that's what I'm gonna do today. Show you how I used 25 pounds of potatoes. I made all of these recipes and now I'm going to take you through how it went. So the first recipe is called Pom Anna, which is essentially like a pie made entirely out of potato. Start by peeling my potatoes. This recipe uses quite a few potatoes, so it appealed to me immediately. I needed to thinly slice them, so I got this mandolin, and I opted for a wider design because some of these potatoes are quite large. And then it was a matter of dialing in the size by adjusting the knob on the back. And you want it to be pretty thin, but not so thin that it's not gonna have any structure to it. So I started by melting a bunch of butter and then pouring off most of that butter into a pitcher, which I'll then add to the layers later on. And then you layer the potato slices overlapping in concentric circles, intermittently adding back some butter I should note that there was a little bit of a gap between mandolining the potatoes and then me doing the layering. So some of my potato slices started to warp in a funny way, which was not ideal, but I ended up taking my other smaller cast iron skillet and smushing down the layers. So then we're heating the pan on the stove top in order to form a crust. Because I have such a large pan, I like to move it around to make sure that I'm evenly heating the entire pan so that there aren't hot spots which are going to maybe burn the potatoes. And you can start to see steam and bubbles coming up around the edges. And then it goes in the oven 30 or 40 minutes until it's tender all the way through. So I got my biggest cutting board, put it on top, and then it was the moment of truth. And, oh boy, this was beautiful. The top, very crispy. Probably could have taken it a bit further and gotten a even more crusty top, but this was very good. It's a recipe that really appeals to me because it's both dead simple, but has this element of fussiness that I kind of like. You could just roast potatoes and get a similar satisfaction, but there's something kind of nice about communicating the effort that you put into it, you know, if you were serving this to guests or something like that. If you're wondering how I consumed all these potatoes, I actually ended up portioning some off, packaging it up and giving it to neighbors and friends and anybody who would help me eat potatoes. So the next recipe I tried is called fondant potatoes. Despite the name, it does not have any uh, cake on it. So for this recipe, I referenced the YouTube channel Food Wishes with Chef John, which I like very much because calm voice explaining recipe. The thing with these Kennebecs, a lot of the large ones are sort of saucer shaped. And what I needed to do was trim these potatoes into the shape of compact cylinders, making sure that they were all approximately the same height. This generated a lot of potato trimmings, which I containered off to then make mashed potatoes later on, which will come into play a little bit later in this video. So in a very hot pan with oil, I seared one side of each of these potatoes, taking time not to do it at too high of a heat where it might burn some portions before you develop an even crust. So once they're all even, you flip them over, remove the excess grapeseed oil in my case, let the pan cool a little bit more so that when I add butter in the next step, it doesn't immediately scald or burn. These potatoes are called fondant potatoes because they are now going to be cooked with stock. Since this recipe just has one main flavoring component, I wanted to get a very nice stock. So I got it from this restaurant and butcher that I've previously used on the channel called Gwen. It's, I think, primarily pork based, and you can tell it's just very thick and good looking. 
then it goes into the oven. And that goes for 30, 40 minutes, basically until it's tender all the way through, which as you can see, I'm testing here with a little uh, cake tester. These things were extremely good. And spooning some of this roasting liquid onto the top of the potatoes, I could not believe how good this tasted. There's starch coming from the potatoes, which is also acting, I think, as a thickening agent. And you end up with this tremendous gravy. It's that custardy inside with the stock that's been sucked inside. And then you have this contrast with the crust on top. But this kind of transforms the potato into more of a uh, statement potato. I love the fondant potato. This was 10 out of 10 potatoes for me. The next recipe I tried is called pomme souffle, which is not a souffle in the way that you think of the category of dishes that are souffles or souffles, but rather a souffle in the meaning of the word souffle, which is to puff or inflate something. Palm souffle is really just taking thin slices of potato and frying it in a particular way so that it will puff. So I started by selecting some choice potatoes and trimming them into rectangles of even height and shape. I then took the mandolin and shaved a couple of test slices at different thicknesses. This technique turns out quite difficult. The first fry, is intended to develop like a skin on the outside of this potato slice. And then on the second fry, with the higher temperature, it should rapidly inflate with the steam that's created inside. The rectangle shape just turned into a potato chip. It was a very good potato chip. You could see in small areas where it wanted to inflate but didn't quite work. And so I quickly gave up on the rectangle shape and instead tried to use a little pastry tip to cut out a circle. So the small circle actually did puff into a sphere, but I thought this was overall too small and, and didn't really work. So I found a cookie cutter to get a large coin sized shape. I also mandolined them a little bit thicker. And then this was a matter of playing with the temperatures of the first fry and the second fry until I started seeing something happen. And ultimately I went through a ton of potatoes and a ton of tests, and this was kind of a fail for me. I ended up getting one that was pretty good, not great, it's kind of the size and shape of a macaron. I think my issue was that the second fry oil because I was trying to control it in this Dutch oven, I don't think it was uniformly hot enough to get that sort of rapid inflation. But ultimately, it's really just something that's intended to be a garnish. Overall, a fail for me, but I ended up with a bunch of potato chips that were quite good. So the next recipe I actually came across on Jacques Pepin's Instagram page, and it's called Pomme Mondor, which means golden mountain of potato. How fantastic is that? Over the course of making these other dishes, I had a lot of trimmed potato sections, which I saved to make mashed potatoes. But to complete this dish, I needed to mash some more. So I cubed them, boiled them, and mashed them with butter, salt, and pepper. So I have my leftover mashed potatoes, into which goes a few eggs, some shredded Gruyere cheese, put it into a buttered casserole dish, and top it with some Parmesan cheese. This then goes into the oven, 400 degrees, 30-ish minutes, but you can see how much this thing puffs in the oven, and you have, truly, this golden mountain of potatoes. And this was great. I mean, the smell of that sort of baked cheese on the outside, fluffy scoop of potato. Fun fact, uh, I thought I was grating Parmesan, but in my rush, I ended up grating Pecorino, which has a much higher melting point, which is why <laughs> the cheese on top is, uh, melted in some places, not in others. I think this would have been even better had I made really smooth mashed potatoes. Overall, it was still very good and felt like a great way to turn just a potato into something a lot more with not that much effort. The final dish is called potato pavé, which is from chef Thomas Keller. And you can actually find this recipe in his ad hoc at home book. And so this one really appealed to me because it's combining a lot of the elements of the previous dishes. We're going to have thin, crispy layers, but also a creamy flavored inside. 
So we're gonna be mandolining potato and layering it in a loaf tin. And so I wanted to make sure that the size of the potatoes would be appropriate. So you slice a crap ton of potatoes and these slices then go into a bowl of cream that's seasoned with salt and pepper. I then took care to cut parchment for this loaf tin. If this doesn't unmold later on, you're really in trouble. So next we're layering the potato in the loaf tin, overlapping slightly. And as you're layering, you're putting these little nubs of butter so that you have the presence of some fat for when it's cooking in the oven. So if you find a video of Thomas Keller making this dish, the potato slices are these dead even rectangles that perfectly fit the tin. My potatoes are kind of all over the place. I started shifting my potato up to the perimeter to evenly cover as best I could. Eventually the center is going to be a little higher. So I ended up taking some slices, trimming them, and then putting them around the perimeter of the dish to get the height more even. And then I continued with some big even slices to kind of make sure that everything was sticking together. Eventually, you fill up this entire tin with potatoes, you then covered it in parchment, and then it goes in the oven. And then you're just slowly cooking this loaf of potatoes until it's tender all the way through. And again, I'm using this cake tester. And with this fine piece of metal, you can really feel each layer pop, 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 pop. And you can see how it's doing in the middle versus the sides and so forth. Once I was satisfied with its tenderness, it cooled out on a rack for a bit, and then it went in my refrigerator overnight. The next day, you unmold this loaf of potato. It's really pretty incredible. You just have a brick of potato. So to serve this dish, you trim off the ends, cutting a nice thick slab, squaring that off into the rectangles, which will ultimately be your pave. And so pave is a reference to like a paving stone, which is what the final dish is meant to resemble. It's like little bricks of potato. I've had some beef tallow hanging around, so I used some of that. In the pan, much like you would cook a protein like a steak, there's a clove of crushed garlic and some thyme. As they become golden on one side, flipping it to the next and repeating until done. And there are my pavés. I also minced some chives, and these things are mesmerizing. You get to make like this little stone hinge of potatoes around your plate. And man, these things were great. I mean, it tastes like a fancy hash brown. And all things considered, even though it's a little bit fussy, it's a little bit finicky to put together, not that difficult. Your active cooking time is really not that much. But if you wanted to make something that was a little bit more showstoppery to put on the side of a holiday meal or something like that, I would totally make these. And they tasted so good. You get the crispy outside and then it just flakes apart and you get like this creamy, tender inside. It's tremendous. So I used 25 pounds of potatoes. Actually, I came just short. So when packing leftovers for my friends, I threw a couple potatoes in the bag. Maybe they can watch this video and try some of the recipes for themselves. Well, thanks for watching and uh, bon voyage.